Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from Lifting Pins and Needles. Welcome to my channel where it's all about sewing. Now today is really all about sewing because I'm not here to show you a specific garment that I've made, but one of the most complicated steps of a recent garment you've already seen and that is the Cindy Jacket by Style Arc. Now what you're going to see is a very detailed step-by-step -step tutorial of the easiest way, the easiest way I could think of that you could, you know, achieve this. <laughs> so if you've never done a welt pocket and you have another pattern that has similar pieces um, or you think that the construction could be adapted to that, it could, you know, serve you for anything, you know, pants, anything. Vivian and I, we want to put welts on everything now, single welts. This is not a double welt. <laughs> so um, I'm just going to show you a peek of what you're going to be seeing in the tutorial. This is just one of the pieces of the jacket that I cut out and I've, I'm just using scraps of cotton as you can see. So that is what you're going to see. I want to thank Vivian because she kindly um, gave me permission to use the photos that she took while she was constructing her garment. Um, the colors she was using and everything is so neatly uh, shown there that I thought it, was, it would be a good addition to the tutorial. So. Thank you so much Vivian for your pictures and if you haven't seen Vivian's uh, Cindy jacket go ahead and look at her channel because her jacket is amazing. And no more blabbing, let us hop into there. What can I do? These are all the pieces involved in making this well pocket for the jacket. You can see the side piece from the front has the mark right there. Now I've measured the width of this and they're, they're using half an inch of a seam allowance there for the stitch line. And I find that very awkward for my sewing machine and the reference points I have with my presser foot. Um, for me it's much easier if it's a one centimeter seam allowance. So instead of being an inch wide, I prefer mine to be two centimeters wide. But that is just a modification I'm making um, that it's not going to affect anything of the pocket, like the look of it. The pieces are still going to fit. It's just the way that it's, it's going to be sewn, for me, is going to be more accurate. So if you have a good reference point for half an inch to sew on your sewing machine, go for it. Remember the plate underneath is covered by all the fabric. So the best reference point for me is the edge of my presser foot. And if I move the needle to the left, I have that option in my machine and guide myself by the edge of the presser foot, then I can have a 3 8 seam allowance super accurately. So I have gone ahead and made a new pattern piece. I kept this same measurement. So the length here is the same, but how wide this opening is, I changed it to two centimeters. So I have that reference point there in the middle, one centimeter here, one centimeter there, or 3 8 of a seam allowance. Then we have pocket pieces. Um, they are shaped very similar. They have the same shape there, the roundness, only one is a little bit longer. The other one is a little bit shorter. And then we have the welt piece. This is the bigger pocket. And you can see here, it says pocket bearer. This is the pocket that goes on the top that when is inside the jacket is next to your skin. And here on the top, it says sew to pocket opening. So that is something to consider. Uh, the instructions of the pocket sort of are on the pattern pieces. Here you can see I have marked dots there. Those dots, I have um, transferred those dots over to my fabric. And I have my fabric right there. You can see those dots are there and those are super important as reference points when we're gonna sew it onto the piece of the jacket. This is a smaller pocket. You also need two pieces of these and it's important to note that it says there, so to welt. Super important to note that. And this is actually the welt. You need to cut two of these and fuse them. So I'm using this fabric. I've put some white interfacing at the back, so that's already done. Remember the smaller pocket piece said, so to welt? Well, this is a welt. So you need to sew these together. So I'm gonna put right sides together and just pin them together for now and that will save you some headaches later. I'm just going to use the same 3 8 of a seam allowance that is used in the hole of the jacket 
and you're going to sew that together so from now on this is just going to be one full piece um, forget about you know the, the different pieces this is one full piece for now I've cut out of just any fabric uh, front piece so you can see the shape of it this is how it's going to be on the jacket or whatever any other piece and I have drawn my reference there my little rectangle remember I modified it to not be an inch wide this way I want it to be two centimeters and that is just going to be easier to sew and it's not going to really affect much of anything remember this pocket piece the bigger pocket the pocket bearer said sew to pocket opening well this is the piece right so you're gonna put your pocket piece right on top of that line there matching up to the line in the middle that I marked there and remember those reference points I marked there those little dots those little dots there that just are in the intersection of the seam allowances those are the dots I marked there so if I put my if I put a pin through that little dot it should match the little rectangle underneath the corner of it you can see there so it needs to be right there I'm just going to leave that pin through there and I'm going to do the same with the other point over there, the other dot. I just want this to be super accurate. So if I put my pin through, it needs to match the rectangle there. Perfect. Then we have our welt that already has the pocket piece on it. It's pinned at this point, but soon it's going to be sewn together. So I'm going to get the right side of the welt and put it on top right there and now my raw edges need to match here the raw, raw edge of the welt and the raw edge of this pocket piece up there and they should also this should also match that line that I made right there that marks the middle of this rectangle thingy so I'd also marked those dots there dot there and a dot there the reference areas of the seam allowances the same as i did on the pocket piece and i'm also going to get some pins and match them put the pin through the, the little dot i made match it to the other side and it was right on the edge of that rectangle now when you're sewing your jacket in real life you can see that the pattern pieces use different type of fabric so you can see that the lower pocket that is sewn onto the well or the smaller pocket piece um, Vivian has used a lightweight contrasting cotton to sew onto that that is correct and you see that the pocket piece that goes above or the larger piece uses the main fabric okay so because I'm going to be using the edge of my presser foot as a reference I'm going to be sewing like this So I'm going to be starting here because when I put my presser foot down, the edge of the presser foot is going to be right on the edge of that welt there. So I want to be sewing in this direction. So I'm going to pop a few pins so this doesn't move. Now I've tried to go pinless. I am not at that skill level. Whenever I go pinless, things shift and end up being really wonky. So I'm not going to pretend I'm that amazing I use pins from this dot to that dot I need a 3 8 of a seam allowance guiding myself from that edge from exactly that dot to exactly that dot and then I need a parallel line over on the other on the other side from the dot to the dot so I'm gonna have two parallel lines both 3 8 of an 8 seam allowance from the middle reference okay, so here you can see my front piece I've got the pocket bearer on the top, aka the bigger piece of the pocket that goes on the top. And on the bottom, I have the welt that has been attached to the smaller pocket piece. And I have pinned them both to the middle line of my reference point in the rectangle. I have matched the points there that are my reference points to start and stop. And I have pinned them on very, very firmly <laughs> and with my presser foot 
I'm going to sew from that point to that point using the presser foot as a guide to match the one centimeter seam allowance I have in between on this. I'm gonna sew from this one there and then flip and then I'm gonna sew that one there. I've already sewn the smaller pocket piece to the bottom of the welt there so we can just forget about it and pretend this is just one piece. I need to mention that on the wrong side I did interface a rectangle around where I'm going to sew the welt just to stabilize the fabric. If I put my machine on number one it brings the needle to the left. I have also shortened my stitch length and now I'm ready to sew. I have already done one row of stitching there from point to point and now I'm going to do the other side. I'm really particular about having the needle drop down exactly on the middle of the point so I do fidget around until I find the point exactly. Now I don't like back tacking because sometimes it goes further than the point when you go backwards. So you can try and do that or you can just leave the threads loose and then um, back tack by hand which is something I prefer. I did back tack on this particular point there but then decided no I, I really don't like doing that so it's up to you what your preference is so you start from the point see the edge of my presser foot on the right side of the screen is right on the edge of the welt pocket piece the stripy piece and that is why I decided to change the measurement I can get a really straight line there super accurate and now I'm going to reach the other point there. Um, at this point, I do slow down. You know, when I'm almost at the point, I do hand wheel so I can control, you know, exactly where the point is going to finish. Now, the points on the rows have to be uh, matching, like they have to be on the right, you know, um, angle. So they have to be straight up. You can see there now when I open this up, my seam line matches exactly the rectangle there. And now the little line in the middle, I need to cut that through. And I'm just going to get my scissors and start chopping away. Now, this is not fast forwarded, the footage. This is real time sort of thing. So I'm cutting up to the point there, which is about 3 eighths of an inch before the end of that rectangle. And then when I get to that point, I need to go and do a diagonal cut to that little point there that you can see there and right to it this drives me insane i think it's such a risky procedure but it needs to be done <laughs> then you go to the other point right there and you have this like little triangle um, and then you switch over and do the other side now the sharpness of my shears on the very tip are not good at this point um, i will need to invest in a better uh, you know pair of scissors these are pretty old my mom gave them to me they must be at least 20 years old um, so yeah, right up to the tip, right up to the tip. And now we start flipping things inside out. So we have the pocket on the top there that we can just throw inside. Now I'm working with cotton fabric here for this demonstration so I can finger press this stuff easily. Um, then we get the bottom one in and that welt pocket piece there, you're going to need to fold it up on itself to cover that gray area or the pocket, you know. So this is very fiddly, you just have to fiddle, fiddle, fiddle. I didn't fiddle everything on camera because, you know, that's boring, but that foldy bit needs to reach the top there, right at the edge there. Remember on your jacket, you're usually working with the same color fabric, so it's not like, like that, you know. After fiddling, <laughs> I managed to get it right to the tip. I've just pinned them there so it doesn't move. And then, um, and now I have to secure those little triangle flaps on the inside, as you can see there. There's a little triangle flappy bit there, and the same on the other side. Now, I'm going to do one stitch line there to close that. And while I'm at it, I'm going to continue on the curve of the two pockets and just close it. So it'll be one continuous stitch up to I get to there and close that other flappy bit. So uh, this needs to be right on the edge. You need to be careful not to catch you know the orange bit there which is your jacket basically <laughs> you got to shove it away and not you know sew through it so I'm just gonna shove that away and I'm just gonna continue all around the pocket you know you don't need to see that it's one continuous stitch and then suddenly I'm gonna be uh, on the other side to close that other triangle flappy bit there and then I'm going to secure that and then it's basically done 
So that's how it looks. Everything is nice and neat. You have a functioning pocket. You have your inner piece there that's sewn onto the welt. You can put your hand in there. And now you can finish the raw edges however you please. You can see that one of the pocket pieces is slightly longer than the other by a few millimeters and that is because I changed seam allowance but I didn't really modify the original pocket pieces. So this doesn't hurt your pocket construction, you can just trim that excess and sew your pocket like normal. Cool, so one of the things I wanted to make sure that you really understand is that this piece inside or the pocket that was on the top, the larger piece, needs to be the same fabric as the one that you're using, your main, you know? In this case, I'm just using scraps and so you don't want a contrast fabric right there. So you want your welt piece and this pocket piece to be the same main. And then the one that's inside there, as you can see with Vivian's photo that I put in the tutorial, you can go, go crazy and, and do whatever contrast fabric you want. Now, um, let me show you mine. I didn't want to take pictures or film this construction because it was all brown and very hard to see. But you can see I made the mistake of using every single pattern piece with the main fabric. So we have a bit of bulk going on in here. Now this one here, should have I should have chosen a really lightweight something, you know. <laughs> you can't see it and it would have created less bulk. Now about the way you want to finish inside, I chose to do it like that. You could just serge all the raw edges and it would be equally, you know, fine. I just decided to make it pretty like that. But yeah, if you have any jacket pattern that has a single welt and you're struggling with instructions or you don't understand, you could try this method. Just try on a few scraps, um, give it a go. And now that I've, you know, I've done it, I have this muscle memory of doing them because I did many of these in my teens when I was making a lot of blazers. And on one occasion I made a mistake and I ruined the garment and then I stopped. But you know, riding a bike, <laughs> you've done it once, you remember. And for these techniques, I think these are the types that you just want to keep doing every now and then. Just keep putting them on things so you don't forget. So those are my tips for you. I hope you enjoyed this and give it a go. I hope you find it easy. I tried to make it as easy as possible. See you soon and happy sewing. Bye.